Hello, YouTube. <laughs> All right, as you can see, I have been working hard on getting the ceiling up. I don't have it all up right now, and I know this is gonna need to be repainted eventually, but I just stuck it up there to hold everything into place. And um, I'm gonna be painting once I get everything assembled. I'm not gonna disassemble it, even though that would make it look better. Uh, it, it has to do with me living in the RV. I cannot just take stuff and put it outside and paint everywhere. Um, the maintenance people, the people who run the RV park would kick me out. So this is, um, the repairs and renovations and stuff have to kind of be done in stealth. People can't really know that I'm actually building in here. And that's why you're seeing things being done the way they are. The sequence seems off. But it has to do with, um, living in it while you're building it. And I just want to do an update for you guys here and let you know what's going on. I did fix this, um, vent here. I was able to find a vent. It was like a four by six inch vent instead of the normal like eight by ten. And these things are like expensive. It was like nine, ten dollars just for this little plastic vent. And that was the cheapest one I could find at Home Depot. I had originally bought a metal vent from Walmart, but it was too big. They didn't have this smaller one. And I was able to get this one, which will allow you to um, direct the air to blow towards the bedroom. Or if you push it in like that, you can shut it. So, you know, it either shuts or you can open it up and, and direct the air to come towards the, uh, the bedroom. So, that's how that one works. These are the standard RV uh, vents. The only issue is I seem to be missing two of them. I'm gonna double check all the um, supplies and stuff where I stuck them to see if I can find them. But if I can't, I'm going to have to adapt like a round vent, like maybe a kitchen vent or a bathroom vent to work with this. But they are expensive. I think it's like 10 to $15 per vent. Yeah, you're talking about a little, little piece of plastic similar to this. It's not even gonna be the same, it's gonna be similar. But I think this is a four inch hole. So if it's standard, it's four inches. Um, I think they're like 10 to $15 just for a little plastic vent. Like I said, this thing was like $10, and that was like the cheapest one. It was like $9 or $10. Uh, and that's why you see what's going on here with the AC. Um, I guess this is where the intake is. The, the air blows up into this thing and recirculates. And this thing does get wet. I'm not sure how to fix that other than you put a drip bucket and let it catch. Or I'm thinking if I cover it, that might fix the problem. Not 100% sure. But what's been happening is water's been collecting up in there and blowing down through here and dripping and making a wet spot on the floor. So I'm not quite sure what's causing it other than condensation. Um, and I was going to get a metal plate, you know, like an AC uh, return cover, vent cover. But those things cost between $20 to $50. I can't believe it. It's just a piece of metal that goes across here. And it has little, you know, like grills in it, little vents. So they come in different sizes, but the ones I saw were between $20 to $50, and I'm not spending $20 to $50 on a little piece of metal to go over that. So I'm gonna go ahead and try to put the AC cover that came with the RV here, but I don't even know if this was original or what, because um, obviously there's no mounting here. They took all the mounting hardware down. I don't know how it mounts. So I'm gonna make up my own system. And um, there's like switches that aren't hooked up. <laughs> so I don't know what the switches are. It look like temperature control and on and off. So I don't know if, if they disconnected it here or what happened. I don't know anything about the wiring. All I know is the AC works right now. So we're not gonna worry about those control knobs and stuff. I don't even know if this was like original AC or they installed a new one or what happened. But, um, what I'm planning on doing is um, mounting it up here, which is why I made a little uh, frame. I made a little wooden frame that goes up to the edge. It's the, the width of um, this thing right here. And then we're gonna screw, there's like little screw holes here. Can't use both of them, but I'm gonna screw a screw right through there, but I need a long one. I don't know if there's gonna be one long enough. This looks like three inches. I don't know if I can get a four inch screw. I think the largest they make is like three and a half inches. That might be large enough. I mean, I'll have to double check and measure that, but, and maybe a washer to hold it in place. So it'll be held up by two screws. And the only reason for putting it up is just to cover up this vent. 
and um, hopefully it might reduce the condensation that gets pulled up there and forms on um, it's forming here in the metal fins right up in there and then it's blowing down here instead of outside at least that's what it looked like before I don't know if you can see the wet spot but I'm, I'm hoping that when I put the vent on there it'll fix it if it doesn't then it's going to drip onto this plastic vent holder and then probably gush down somewhere. So I'll have to deal with it at that point. It, it's a matter of putting the, the thing together and then seeing what happens. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I have no clue what's going to happen. I'm crossing my fingers that when I put that up here, it'll make the problem go away. So... Because I'm, I'm thinking it'll cover, you know, the metal here so it doesn't pull as much moisture out of the air. And then um, that means most of the the ceiling will be up other than the front part here. The, this front part, I still need to put the ceiling up. You can see I've been putting these um, ribbing across to hold everything into place. It was actually, um, I, I had to do this by myself. Uh, so this is like really difficult trying to hold up the panels and, and screw it in and, and make it all well, my back is so sore right now and I got to go to work tomorrow so I know I'm going to be aching all day or even tonight I'm already hurting right now I think I might go jump in and take a nice hot shower but um, you know at the uh, at the um, what do they call it the parks uh, shower they have a, a bathroom facility shower so just wanted to give you guys a quick update, let you know what's going on with the, the ceiling situation. It is almost done. Um, just a quick glance here, you can see the RV is falling into place. I did um, rebuild this entire table. But I put a little cheap Dollar Tree um, table cover on it. Turns out the table cover is way too big, but I folded it and did some weird stuff, but this is what it looks like now. That's just to keep damage to minimal and to keep moisture and stuff from soaking through, even though I did spray that with polyurethane, but it turns out the coating was not that thick. I think you need to brush it on to, to make it thick enough. So would I recommend the, the spray on polyurethane? No. I'd probably recommend getting um, the brush on kind next time. And I might even do that in the future, but for now, Having a tablecloth, I think it looks fine right there. And, you know, it's, it's a plastic tablecloth from Dollar Tree. Just one dollar. It looks nice. I did buy a little um, dishwash dryer towel. And I'm trying to make the place look somewhat presentable. Um, this pile that everyone keeps complaining about and what drives me nuts is because of construction. <laughs> what you're looking at is construction material. And um, I don't have any place to put it until it gets done. And I do use it while I'm here. And that's why it looks like a mess. Even the aluminum foil was construction, but that can be thrown away here shortly. That was uh, covering the table here while I was um, hadn't had a chance to put the polyurethane on it. But now that polyurethane is on it, it's pretty much done. Can do a touch-up later, but for now, with the tablecloth on it, I think we can function. Everything seems to be working. Um, I still haven't gotten the oven working here or the fan vent, but that's going to be my next major project is getting the... Um, the, uh, what do they call this? The hood? <laughs> the, uh, the stove and oven hood fan to, to work. When you try to turn it on, it doesn't come on at all. It has a, a multi-speed knob here, but it doesn't seem to work. So I need to figure out why it's not getting any power to, to that fan unit. And see if there's a fuse somewhere that I'm not aware of, or um, if the circuit is just disconnected. And if the circuit is disconnected, I may have to rewire it myself. I, I'm pretty sure it's probably 12 volts, considering that everything else in the van, not the van, but the RV is 12 volts. So I'll try hooking it up with a 12 volt. Or maybe I'll try to look at the manual, see if there's a manual on that oven. And see what's going on with that, that vent. And see if maybe there's a fuse on it somewhere, but I doubt it. Seems like if they had a fuse, it would be back here. Um one of these circuit breakers but um you see we have storage here <laughs> and yes this is a mess too so i've got to go through all my buckets all my junk this was stuff that had been pulled from storage and from hut 2.0 everything's crammed into the rv right now which is why you see what you're seeing but my hope is that um by the end of this week 
um, you know, this is Sunday right now. By the end of this coming week, by next weekend, the um, RV will be a lot more organized. I don't know if I'm gonna have that, that part of the ceiling done, but I hope so, because if I can get that part done, the RV is like 90% done as far as interior wise. Um, it just needs, you know, trimming and stuff. Speaking of trimming, I did go look at Home Depot at the um, the little trim, you know, the little pieces of wood or plastic or whatever that go there, and they're kind of expensive. It's like, um, the cheapest one I found was like 69 cents per feet, linear feet. So, you know, if you're looking at covering the whole RV with those things, like this is like two feet right here. So that'd be four, five. It could be like 60 feet or more to do the RV, the entire RV. And then you got the sides and the corners. I could end up spending 100. That means like 70 to $100 just for um, the little trim, which I don't think I want to spend that kind of money uh, on, on just trim, just to make it look pretty. So what I'm contemplating is just getting these. These, um, I think they're one by twos. I think they're like a dollar each, maybe two dollars for like, um, it's like eight foot long. And then just using this, I think it looks fine. And then um, running it across, we'll see. The, the idea is to get the RV uh, somewhat presentable without spending too much money. You know, we're not, we're not going for perfection, we're just going for good enough. But even though we're going for just good enough, we do want to try to make it look nice if possible, as long as it's not too much more expensive. Which is why, even though I'm putting all these panels and stuff up, they're kind of yellowish brown which is kind of nasty looking. Um, I will be repainting them, probably painting them white and maybe even fixing the little cracks and stuff to just make it look nicer, you know? Uh, but basically, I want to make it look nice without buying a brand new one or spending a lot of money. If I can find a junk RV somewhere and pull the components, I can do that. But I may not even bother. I may just fix what I have. And, you know, a fresh coat of paint, I think will do wonders. Painting it like off white or, what, or white, whatever color to match the ceiling and stuff. Will make everything look so much newer. Uh, if you're wondering about the ceiling panels, I am going to paint it. I'm not going to leave it wood. Um, because I think it'll look brighter in here, white. And I don't really like the, uh, the wood grain here on the ceiling. Although I kind of like it on the walls. So we may keep the walls kind of wood grain. No, you can't see in here, the lights are off, but um, with the wood grain on the walls, I think it looks pretty good. So, you know, that still needs to be finished. So basically things are being put together, but they're not finished. And like I said, um, hopefully by next weekend, I'll have it 90% done, not finished, but 90% functional so that, that that becomes a front bedroom, overhead bunk area becomes a bedroom and my kids can start spending the night, you know, on a weekend visitation or something. So that is the plan. I just wanted to update you guys. Uh, thank you all for tuning in. I do appreciate all of you uh, sending me your kind thoughts and positive energy. I know there are some people that I do not understand why um, they seem to be filled with so much negativity. <laughs> Ever since I got the RV, they've been saying I would fail, I would fail, I wasted my money and stuff. Well, you know, I'm doing the best that I can with what I have, and I think that um, overall this, this process and converting this RV and trying to get it all together um, without spending too much money. I think we're still under $2,000 total right now with the cost of purchasing the RV, transporting it, and doing all the renovations that you see right now. I don't think it's too bad for a $2,000 RV, and that even includes like the big screen TV and the other stuff I've installed here, like the um, toaster oven. I know, it's a mess. I just, I just had some food here, but uh, basically, it's a, it's a house for $200. Tiny little house. <laughs> and I don't think you can beat that. So until next time, everyone, take care. God bless you all. Thank you, um, supporters of the channel, and those of you who pray for me and send me positive energy. Uh, special thanks to the patrons. You are helping me to produce these videos and also plan to move forward and produce even better content um, because... I don't know if you can see, I am in process of shifting out of homelessness if, if, you know, I don't suddenly have a tragic sequence of weirdness occur. <laughs> we may actually be seeing Denoy finally getting out of homelessness. It's been 10 years and that's uh, an awful long time to be homeless. So I, um, 
I'm at a loss for words when I think about the kindness of strangers, pretty much, who have now become friends, have shown me um, since starting up the YouTube channel. Because three years later, you know, um, we actually have a tiny house on wheels. That's pretty much from starting with $3 in my pocket. So, I thank you all for um, coming on this journey with me, and I thank you for your continued support. Um, if I do suddenly make the manage to make the break from homelessness into having uh, a real home and a place to park it, not worrying about becoming homeless again, hopefully I can return your kindness by producing even better content, um, basically what you guys want to see. So we'll talk some more about that in a future episode, but for now, I just need to get good enough, good enough. Take care, everyone. Have a good night. Take care. God bless you all. Bye-bye now.